The following presentation was made possible by the Alltech Media Group, a Southern California multimedia company providing exponential branding and marketing services to all their clients. The Alltech Media Group understands the value of the 3W strategy, providing their clients proven, trackable results. Let us make it easy for you to grow your business. Visit alltechmedia.com. Our keynote speaker this morning is here to tell us about an exciting new development that will soon be taking place in downtown. He is a familiar face to many of us here, but today he is representing the Greens Group, which is a family-owned and operated developer and property management company with 12 hotel locations in Arizona, Utah, and California. Just some of their current brands include Hampton Inn, Comfort Inn, and Best Western. I will let him fill you in on the details, but this project will help our great existing hotels to meet the growing demand for downtown hotel space for visitors, tourists, and conventioneers, and provide more permanent jobs for local residents. This is particularly true with the expansion of the Riverside Convention Center, the growth of the Fox Performing Arts Center, and the development of more restaurants and entertainment opportunities in Riverside. Please join me in welcoming the Vice President and Senior Project Manager of SOMAS, my pal, Andrew Walker. Good morning, Riverside. Um, I'm here on behalf of Greens Group, as Stan mentioned. Thank you to Cindy, thank you to the Chamber, thank you for all for attending this morning. I um, wanted to start this a little bit differently. I um, wanted to take a look back before we, uh, before we go forward on it. Um, what I mean about that is, let's look at some of the hotels that have been in downtown Riverside in the past. Um, this is the Teatley Hotel. It was on the corner of 8th and Lemon. This photo was taken probably about the 1930s. And the rooms uh, went for a dollar a night. And if you wanted a bath, it was $2. So they must have been purchasing water from Western, I think. But I'm not sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we lost this uh, hotel in a 1972 fire. This one may uh, look a little familiar. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> uh, this is the Casa de Anza, currently known as the Santa Cruz Inn. Uh, about 34 rooms back in the day. I think it's a little less now. Um, another one is a hotel, Holyrood. I think that's a Swedish uh, term. Um, it's, it was on 8th and Market. Um, originally built in 1884, uh, it was later expanded uh, in the early 1900s to a 100-room uh, guest hotel. And then, of course, the uh, historic Orange Street um, Hotel. So a look back at a little bit of uh, some of our uh, historic uh, hotels in, uh, in downtown. So I want to jump forward a little bit. Everyone here in this room, most people in this room here, I think kind of take for granted what we have here. Um, I, I, I want to take this, this opportunity, the Greens Group um, has made a huge investment in the city of Riverside. And I want to kind of put that into context again on uh, what this is so, what, what this means here. Um, Mission Inn, you can't say downtown Riverside without thinking of Mission Inn, and of course, the correlation between the Festival of Lights. Um, number one public light display two years in a row, PAX Downtown Riverside, every year. The, uh, the convention center, the newly remodeled convention center, just the last six months of 2015, there were 154 events with a total of 81,693 event participants. The average daily revenue per event equates to $17,452. So the Riverside uh, Municipal Auditorium, um, it's rehab. Uh, was also part of the uh, of the Riverside Renaissance. There was a total of 85 events with 50,000 attendees in 2015. Of course, the Fox Theater, um, 118 events and 70,000 attendees in 2015. 
the Main Street Pedestrian Mall. Um, this was also part of the uh, Riverside Renaissance Project. Um, from 5th Street to 10th Street, building to building, the entire place was, all the concrete was removed and totally reimagined, redesigned, and today it really lends the authenticity of a downtown pedestrian friendly uh, 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 area. Of course, the uh, downtown historic county courthouse. This has been the nexus for other courts to come into town of the legal center for the county of Riverside. So why the look back has to do with a lot of these projects that are coming in. Um, to go through it, I'm gonna go through this quick here. Center Point Commercial, 9,000 square feet of retail, right on market between first and second. The Stadler Building, four stories, 165 housing units and, and a substantial amount of retail. The Imperial Hardware Lofts, 90 loft style units right on Main Street Pedestrian Mall and University. The Mission Lofts, a true transit oriented development uh, adjacent to uh, the Metrolink. Center Point Townhomes, nine units between First and Market. Center Point Apartments, 125 units with a parking structure. Coyle School of the Arts and RCC Centennial Plaza. I'm, I'm doing this one quick because you're going to hear about this, uh, I think, next time. Mess Hall, a market for, for everyone that's hungry, all your foodies. Um, going to be a great opportunity to connect our agricultural uh, roots with, uh, with great dining. The Chow Alley, Piazza at the Courthouse, a, uh, a whole new concept in, in dining, micro, micro kitchens. So new hotels in downtown. Why? Supports Riverside Convention Center. Right now, uh, the Convention Center is having troubles actually booking events because there is actually a shortage of downtown uh, uh, hotel space available. Helps to stimulate overall economy and economic activity in the region. Creates temporary jobs during construction, permanent jobs during operation. Increases property tax base in Riverside. Provides substantial transit occupancy tax does not directly compete with other downtown hotels. Helps increase downtown atmosphere. So where is the site we're talking about? We're talking about on the corner of Fifth and Market and Fairmount, that half, half, half block there. Um, in the picture, it's outlined in red. It's right across the street from the Hyatt and the Marriott and one block away from the convention center, strategically located. Here's the corner for everyone trying to imagine where that's at. Um, it's a two-phase project. Uh, phase one is a Hampton Inn, and phase two is a home to suites, which is a longer stay product of one of the first ones actually in Riverside. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to stay in one, this is some of the, uh, some of the furnishings inside, and here's some of the amenities. The Hampton Inn is 112 guest rooms, and there'll be 118 parking spaces. It's absolutely fully parked. Um, it's a five-store hotel. It's a, in the upper mid-scale category, which we actually do not have downtown right now. Um, all rooms have capacity to sleep for. Um, complimentary full hot breakfast, uh, beer and wine reception. And for those of you that have stayed in any of the other brands there, you'll get kind of a feeling for, for what that is. And then phase two is the home to suites. That's the uh, extended stay product. Um, that's actually going to be constructed with a parking structure on the corner of uh, Fairmount and Fifth Street. So some of the, uh, some of the uh, pictures of that product by Hilton. Um, that hotel will be 147 guest rooms. The total parking will then bump up to 312 parking spaces with the parking structure. Um, it's a six-story hotel. Um, as we're talking about you know, the, 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 the niche here, this is the upper mid-scale. And that extended stay category is so important because right now we lose a lot of revenue to uh, hotels that are extended stay outside of the city limits. So very important uh, niche for the, for the hotel market here. Um, all rooms have the capacity to sleep for. Uh, complimentary hot breakfast again. And kitchens in every room, obviously that's kind of one of the hallmarks of an extended stay hotel. Um, there's some of the competing brands. If any of you have stayed in any of those, you'll get kind of the feeling for, uh, for what that is. So here's the uh, illustration uh, for the phase one, the Hampton Inns, a little better than the first slide that you saw at that corner. 
And uh, on phase two, that's the uh, home to suites tucked right behind it there. So this is my, my Debbie Guthrie slide, as I say, because every time I see her, she asks me when she can start booking these hotels. So Debbie, take a picture of this. <laughs> So we're, uh, we're looking at getting to planning commission on March 17. Um, that's gonna be for both phase one and two. Um, begin construction is looking for October 2016. Uh, Hampton Inn opening October 27. And then as mentioned, the home to suites is the second phase. Uh, we're looking at opening as soon as the market is, uh, is, is ready to accept that. So um, wanted to uh, thank everyone again for your time. I wanted to end uh, kind of supporting Ann Mayer's earlier comments about traffic. Um, part of the, the old black and white photo research was that I uh, found a real interesting slide that uh, the one thing that we still have consistency is traffic on uh, in Riverside here. So don't use Mount Rubido as a detour. Thank you.